Hey there. Okay, in today's video I'm going to show you how to attach the outer sole to the inner sole and the top of the foot, the whole clog you've already made. So you're just adding the outer sole and then the edging along the bottom. And then you're going to be ready to be done. You're going to be ready to felt those puppies and put them on your tootsies. So despite the fact that it's late August and it's 85, 90 degrees still, I'm really excited to get these slippers done. Um, the pair I'm making, I mentioned I'm going to be mailing off for a gift, but then I'm going to turn around and start another pair for me because it's been several years since I've made some for myself. So awesome, you guys have done a great job. The knit along has been a lot of fun. It's super exciting for me to see everybody progress, learn new skills, and, and get their slippers made. It's a really awesome Christmas gift for people in your family or friends. Um, you know, because you can just bust out a pair in a week. So it's not too early to think about the Christmas knitting. So, okay, be sure, if you're in our um, Facebook group, be sure to vote for what your next knit-along project you'd like to be. There's a poll there. Um, if you want to join the Facebook group, just click the link down below, and we'll get started. All right, I've knitted the second sole from my slippers. So I've got all my six rows done, and now I'm going to be ready to attach my outer sole to my main part of my clog. So in the same way that we did when we folded down the top cuff and attached that to the inside, we're going to take our um, smaller needle, or it can be the same size, but you know, the smaller size 11 will be a little bit easier. Um, I start at the back seam, and again, we're just going to go pick up those top pearl bumps, okay? We're going to go in from the top. That That's a little bit going to be a little bit tight but you're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna pick up those top pearl bumps, okay? So, and I'm picking them up from top to bottom so they end up looking like a proper knit stitch and it's not twisted and it's the correct way. Now you'll see here you kinda of have the top loops and then you have like these bottom loops. I stay on the top row. Okay, the bottom ones are from a previous stitch. Just stay on your top row. So you're not you are not going to pick up this one and this one. Just stay one, two, three on the top row and leave those lower ones be. Okay. So you're going to go all the way around and pick up all those edge loops. Now it is going to get a little hairy. So you know, um, have a adult beverage or some chocolate or whatever makes you happy. It gets a little hairy when you get to the curvy bit here on the toe, but just persevere and if you need to pull your needle through kind of in a similar way to a magic loop style, you can pull your needle through the cable to give yourself some slack and I'll show you that here in a moment when I get to the curvy bit that's a little bit awkward. You can see I'm using my left hand to kind of direct things and I'm about to get up to the top part here where things are getting a little little tighter to maneuver so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my needle all the way through okay that'll give me a little bit of slack and then I'm just gonna loop my cable around to give give me some ease of working here and then I'll just carry on see then I can maneuver my right my my right needle or sorry the needle in my right hand I can just maneuver that a little easier around that toe curve okay and then I've already got my magic loop technique built in there which I'm probably gonna need this is a little this is a little awkward when you go to attach and knit the other sole, the outer sole, on. Okay, now read ahead with the directions because you're going to knit it on, but you're not immediately going to cast off in the same way that we did with the cuff. We're going to knit it on the outer cuff, and then we're going to knit a row or two before the cast off, if you choose to have the curved rolled down bumper, which I've always made it that way. I kind of like how it looks. Um, you know, read, read your pattern. You can decide if that's what you prefer, but that's what I'll be showing you here. Okay, see, so I'm getting there to the end. I still have my, I've got my magic loop curve built into the top, so that's pretty cool. Sorry if I went off screen there for a moment. Um, I have the 
camera on a tripod, so I have to be sure to kind of keep my hands huh, where I think you can see them because I don't have a, a person helping me do this. So bear with me if I go wayward on occasion. Okay, now this gets a little bit persnickety. Um, you can see where I wove in something there. So you just kind of have to guess where, make your best guess where your your loop is. And again, I'm going to stress again, this is all going to be felted together. You're not going to see any of this. So, okay. There we go. So I'm going to push this down. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one through. You can actually, I don't know if we need the magic loop thing or not. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and pull it through because I want the, I want that right hand needle out of my way, actually. Yeah, I would pull that through. Okay, now I'm going to take the, uh, my outer sole that I've already made. I need the other end where my working yarn is coming off right here. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to attach this in the same way that I did the cuff. I'm going to bring around my metal needle because it's sharper. If you have bamboo needles, hopefully they're not as dull as mine. And again, same as before, we're going to go in as if to knit both of these together because that's, in fact, what we're going to do. Make sure that your yarn is not underneath your working, make sure your needle's not over the top of your working yard, because I just did that and it's awkward. So, okay, make sure that your working or your supply yarn is free. Go around as if to knit. Do not, well, you are going to pull them off, but do your second one, and then do, we're not casting off, so do not do the thing where you lift the first one over the second one, because we're not, whoops, we're not doing that just yet. Okay, go ahead and lift those off the stitches. Now you have two. And you're just going to carry on in this way all the way around, okay? All right, so we've attached the outer sole to the inner sole, leaving everything on our needles because my intention is to do the bumper section. So now we're just going to knit one more round, following the instructions there about increasing a little bit more. And the make one knit ones throughout this next round, and then we'll be ready to cast off. I finished going around my one round with increases. Now I'm ready to cast off. And my pattern says, do not turn, continue around, cast off all stitches loosely, knitwise. The bumper will roll downward toward the sole of the clock. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. So, you know, my needle here's a little long, so I'm just gonna pull it through enough. It kind of bunches up the stitches in the back when I do that, but that's all right. I'm just pulling it through enough to, um, I want to curl it around and just make it easier to handle. So I'm just going to go in knitwise and I'm going to knit a stitch off, go into the second stitch and knit that one. And now just like we did with the cuff, we're going to take the first one that we did and pull it over the most recent one. Okay. Again, you just go in and knit a stitch, take the one to the right or the back and pull it over the, the front. So that is casting off, and we're going to do this all the way around until we get back to the beginning, and then we will weave, cut our yarn and weave everything in, sew up the bottom, and be done. And I'll show you all those finishing tidbits in a moment. Okay, carry on with your cast off. All right, we finished our cast off, and you can see that made a nice clean edge along here. When I get to the last one, I get to the end. Um, there's kind of a, a crevice or a dip here. I mean, I don't know, it kind of bugs me. You can certainly stitch that together, but what I usually do is just, I just poke my needle in there, and then I knit that, and that's my, because I like to just close that up. I guess, I don't know, I started doing that. I just like how it looks better with the finished edge. So then, you've got your last one here. So all I do is cut my yarn, oh, seven or eight inches down here, okay? And then I simply draw that through. Now what I'm gonna do here is use that, I use this to stitch up this first little section here until I get down to my other, my other tag end. Um, this is just a, a tidbit from where I wove in something underneath, so that's fine. So what I'm gonna do now is just stitch, start doing my mattress stitch and going back and forth here. So I'll find my darning needle again. I try to remember to put them back. 
I have lost more darning needles, like in the cushions of the couch and all, some of them I just never find. Anyway, but this particular one has been with me for a while, so I'm trying to be careful of that. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is, same as before, I'm going to go in and start, uh, I just use a simple mattress stitch back, back and forth to close that gap and sew up my outer sole. Now, periodically, I will go through and catch the lower inner sole on purpose. So that way, I'm kind of tacking together the inner and the outer sole. So, you know, do that every couple of inches just to make sure that everything is attached because you don't, you want them to felt together. You don't want them to felt um, differently and end up separating. That, that wouldn't be good. I'm just going, taking this one back up because that's my heel that's going to get a lot of wear. And then I'm just going to weave this in and out along the top and trim it off neatly on the bumper, okay? So that's all I do for that. Now, I'm gonna start sewing together and seaming up the inner and outer. This comes off kind of at the bottom, so I'm just gonna start on that right side. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And again, I'm just doing that mattress stitch to, to close everything up. It's super simple. Um, but like I said, try to remember when you go in on one side, try to remember occasionally to go pick up a loop or something underneath just so that you're sandwiching together the, your layers. Okay? So there you go. You are done. Now, make your second one. And then we'll be ready to shove them in the washer and felt them. Pretty excited about that. I know a couple of you have already, um, in the group, have already started your felting process, so that's awesome. So just, you know, don't wait on me. Carry on if you'd like. I'll try to do the felting video either, oh, this afternoon, depending on how school is going with my kids and other chores. We still have green beans we're canning, so we'll get there. Um, I'm going to have to join another bit of gray yarn here like I did before. So, again, I'm just going to weave this up through and uh, find a weave that in and out in a, a good way. Trim it off and do the same thing to begin my other yarn section. Um, the other thing I wanted to add was there's a note. There's a note on the pattern um, that says to do a very loose back stitch to tack the two soles together. So so you could turn this inside out or put your hand put your hand inside and then do that do that back stitch back stitch down the center down the center of that. You know, I must confess I've never actually done that. Um when I sew up this outer sole, I do I just put my needle down through and I pick up a loop of the inner sole at the same time and I'm not sure, now that I think about it, I'm not sure why I started doing that. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's been a lot of years since I made the first pair, and I guess I just started doing that to uh, maybe cut out a step. I don't I don't know why I started doing that. Anyhow, so that's, I guess, a discrepancy or a difference between what I do and what the pattern says. But anyway, so yay. Congratulations on finishing your knitted part, and uh, felting will commence shortly. Okay, the other other thing I wanted to say, and I keep like coming back, um, I do have yarn left over. So when I originally started this pair, I purchased two skeins of this color, okay, and it was the uh, Patons Classic Classic Wool. So I had two skeins of this, and I had one skein of this contrasting top of the foot color and I don't know where the tidbit is um, but I knitted the women's large size and I did have some left over so I'll make something with this I keep a box or a basket with all my um, tidbits and my scraps and I will either knit a felted kitty bed or I might make pot holders or I make I might make myself or my kids some uh some slippers that have stripey scrap yarn, you know. I d might just knit one color till I run out of it and then add on another and it'll be what it is. So that's 
But needless to say, it will not go to waste. All right, so let me see your finished clogs, and then we'll get on to felting them either this afternoon or tomorrow. Okay, knit on.